Look up here in late February and you should be able to see all the planets in our night sky. I'm 13 News Meteorologist Matt Standards. We have a full seven planetary alignment for the last few days of February. It's a short window, about six days you could possibly see this. We want to let you know where you should look and at what time, a couple tips that you may want to know and you know which star or planet when you're looking could just look like stars. Which one's which? And which ones will you need to look at in order to kind of find with a pair of binoculars or possibly even a telescope? There's going to be five of them visible with your naked eye. And then two of them will be tougher to see. One, you're probably going to need a pair of binoculars. And the other one, you definitely need a telescope. So let's get into it. Let's talk about the planets first that you're going to be able to see. I have nine planets up here. I've got Pluto still up here, a dwarf planet. I still believe in Pluto. But eight planets officially minus Earth. Seven planets is what we could possibly see in our night sky. We've got from shortest distance to longest distance from the sun. We've got Mercury, Venus, here we are on Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Uranus, and then Neptune. You're gonna be able to see them all in the night sky. Guys, this is rare. The next time we could possibly see all seven planets of ours, possibly may be until 2028. So soak this in. Here's the calendar for February. We'll try to make it super simple. We've circled the days that you should be able to see it. Should start on Sunday, February 23rd, as Mercury starts to join the party. We've actually had a six planetary alignment for a while now, for about a, about a month, month and a half. But Mercury comes in finally coming around the sun, so giving us our seven planetary alignment. And then peak conjunction, we think, for some of the planets when they're really, really close together for Saturn and Mercury, that'll be the 24th. So 24th and 25th could be some of the, the best days to possibly see the seven planetary alignment. But then starting March 1st, Saturn slips from view just as the sun sets. Saturn gets out of the way. It's actually up there in the sky before the sun sets, but since the sun's still up, it's very tough to see. You won't really be able to see it. Saturn leaves, and so we only have six days. We have less than a week in order to see it. And we get this question a lot. What about the moon? You're not talking about the moonlight. Well, we don't need to. Good news. Full moon in February was 11 through 12. So that means the moon's not even rising until well after you're trying to even to look at the night sky for this. Also known as the eagle moon, bear moon, groundhog moon. That makes sense here in February. Hunger moon, that's a good one. And then the raccoon moon. So we don't have to worry about any moonlight because here's the thing. You should be able to look at the night sky about 60 to 90 minutes after sunset. So here's why. We've got kind of a top-down look at our solar system. Very simplified view. Remember, not all our planets have a completely perfectly circular orbit. Even the Earth has a little bit more of an elliptical order just, just by touch. So here's the sun, here's Earth. We've got the dark side there and then the light side. So kind of cut in half. So as the sun is setting right there on the edge between darkness and light, look what you can possibly see. Here's Mercury, it's been over here for a while, but it's coming on and it moves fast. I think it has an orbit of about 60, 70 days or so. So it's moving fast. So it's been on the other side of the sun, so we haven't been able to see it. But here's the thing. Now the Earth's going kind of this way. Saturn's going to be blocked here soon. So this is why we only have six days in order to see the planets. But here's Neptune kind of on the far edge too. We've got Uranus, Jupiter, and Mars. And of course, Venus really close. And that's pretty bright as well. Also see how the moon is kind of on the other side of Earth when you're looking from a sunset perspective. So that's why we don't have to worry about the moonlight. If we had moonlight, it would make it tougher to see the planets. Here's what it would roughly look like. It's kind of an annotated look. First off, you're going to want to look in the southern sky. So if you're facing south, so if I kind of turn around, if I face south with you guys, when I start looking off to my right, or kind of that southwestern sky, you're going to start to see some of these planets align first. They'll go up and they'll go to your left. That's how you want to do it. Face south, and then kind of look, and they'll be in an arc too. They're not gonna be in a line. In fact, that's not really possible because we live on a sphere. Here's the best way to describe why you see everything on an arc or what we call an ecliptic. If you've got a circle table and imagine all the planets kind of around it. If you put your eye at eye level with the table, it would look like they're in the line. But if you sit up or stand up and then you kind of look at the table, you would actually see the curvature of the table and it would look like an arc. That's why it would be an arc in our night sky as well. Kind of at the top of the sky and then all the way down to the right or to the southwest. But you still see a little bit of sunset out there. That's what makes it a little bit tricky. Saturn and Mercury may be a little bit tougher to see because it would be closer to that setting sun. We want to look just after sunset. And this time of year, many of us have a sunset time 
there about 6.45, 7 o'clock. So between 7 to 8, maybe up to 8.30, but really before 9 o'clock. So let's say overall 7 to 9 o'clock would be your window, but really try to do it 7 to 8. That's your time to watch because what happens is as the Earth turns, we're going to see probably Saturn and Mercury start to slip out of view. They'll actually kind of go down towards the horizon. So you only see them very briefly and actually all the planets kind of do that too. You know, if you do a time lapse of the night sky, you don't have everything kind of shifts. The same thing will be for our planets. They'll kind of shift in that arc as well. So you have a very limited window to see all the planets. Nice is that it's just after sunset. Sometimes we get a planetary alignment there uh, close to the sunrise. You gotta wake up early, but just stay up just a little bit longer and you'll be able to see the seven planets. So this is what it looks like annotated. But what about the brightness level? How will each one look? Because they're not all gonna look the same. Really depends on how bright they are to the human eye. We use this magnitude scale and it, it seems kind of wonky, but the more negative you go, the brighter the object is. So for example, the sun is at about a negative 26 to negative 27 brightness. That's so bright you can't look at it directly with your own eyes. That's super bright. The moon's pretty bright too. Here, what our eyes could possibly see up to theoretically a positive six. But that means you're in complete darkness looking at an object. And we're not in that case because we still have a little bit of dusk out there because of the sun has set it. You want the sun to be out of view, but you still have some light from the sun. So they're dusk. And you also have to have perfect eyesight and no clouds whatsoever. So that's theoretically possible. Let's say it's more about a five or so. So we would kind of scoot the eyeball a little bit. Here's Polaris, the North Star. So you can kind of see that range. A lot of our planets though are just at zero or into the negative category. That makes them really bright. They're gonna be brighter than most of the other stars in the night sky. So that is exciting. Hubble Space Telescope can see objects about to a, a positive 30 magnitude. So really, really dim objects out deep in space. So this kind of gives you perspective. So you want them in the negative category for the brightness level. So we went ahead and did each one. So Mars is good, negative 0.4. Jupiter negative 2.3, and here's a quick thing, for every one unit magnitude, so from a one to a two to a three, or even going to negative, for every one unit of magnitude, it's a different about 2.5 times the brightness level. So Jupiter actually is gonna be quite a bit brighter than Mars. Mars has been getting dimmer since the new year. All right, Uranus is gonna be hard to see. Magnitude 5.8, theoretically you could see it, but might want a pair of binoculars and see that one. Telescope it even better. Venus, the brightest one, negative 4.8. That's gonna be really bright in the night sky. We've probably have seen that for the past several nights. Neptune, 7.8, positive. That is tough to see. You're gonna want a telescope for that one. Saturn at 1.1, you can see that. And Mercury, negative 1.2. When we were talking about peak conjunction, these on the 24th are gonna get really close together. In fact, they may even look like a one star. So that's kind of cool in the space world, a conjunction taking place. And then what you're going to notice is Mercury goes up this line just because it's moving so fast. It'll kind of go up this line night by night as Saturn disappears. Saturn disappears starting in March. And that's why we end that seven full planetary alignment. So take the annotations off. You're looking south. This is what it should look like. You can see the other stars too, but bright in the night sky. And we've kind of drawn them as, as the best uh, to illustration what you should possibly see with your eyes. It's not perfect. This is what you'll see. You'll be able to see some of the planets and be super bright. Venus will be really bright there on the right. And you can see Saturn and Mercury just above the horizon there close to sunset. So make sure you look up. The next time we have a full planetary alignment won't be until 2028. So enjoy the view. After the seven, we'll go back to a six and then we'll slowly start losing other planets. You know, back in the past when you had a full planetary alignment, uh, the astronomers and magicians would, would think something crazy is about to happen. The only thing crazy going on right now is just a cool view in the night sky. Make sure you look up and enjoy. If you want to try to take a picture, you may want to use a DSLR camera, get a little bit of extra exposure so you can see all the planets. But we've got uh, Mars, Jupiter, Uranus. There's Venus. Venus is going to be very bright. Got uh, Neptune, Saturn, and Mercury. All in that ecliptic, that arc in the night sky. Enjoy looking up in the night sky late February 2025.